Next up, I did the same test inside of Logic Pro X, and these results might surprise you. Native Instruments have just released the latest version of their most popular sampler, Contact. Version 6.7 is now compatible with the new M1 Mac computers and ARM processors. But how many tracks can we open up inside of Pro Tools and Logic Pro X? Let's find out. So to talk a little bit about the session setup for these tests, I set the sample rate to 96K for both Pro Tools and Logic. The hardware buffer is going to be set as large as humanly possible so that we can optimize playback of all of the tracks. No other plugins were used in these tests so that we could just test the performance of Contact by itself. No screen recording was done during any of the testing to ensure that all resources were available for the DAW only. I also restarted the computer before each test, before opening the DAW for each test to make sure that the cache was as clear as possible going into each test. One more quick note about session setup is that each of these benchmarks are going to include a figure or a number of tracks that I was able to load up inside of the DAW. And this is a number that I could successfully achieve playback of all of these tracks looping back over and over without any errors whatsoever. Within adding about five to 10 more tracks from these numbers resulted in CPU errors that I could not proceed with continuous playback. Another quick note about session setup is that Pro Tools is not yet qualified as of early 2022. It is not yet qualified for the Monterey and M1 Mac computers. However, Logic Pro X is because it's made by Apple and therefore you have the option to not open it via Rosetta and that is how I currently have it configured. So if I'm opening up Logic for any one of these tests, that means it's gonna not be running via Rosetta and neither is contact inside of Logic that is gonna be opening up using the native ARM processing on the machine. So without further ado, let's get to the results. So the first library that I opened was the Session Strings Pro 2 library from Native Instruments. This was the largest library that I owned. It took the longest to download from the complete Ultimate library. What I was able to load up inside of Pro Tools was 30 instruments in total. So that was not a very large number. I don't know what I expected going into that sort of test, but it does match up with my test earlier last year. So you can check out that video if you would like to see that test. Next up, I did the same test inside of Logic Pro X, and these results might surprise you. So I was able to load up 30 tracks. That's right, exactly the same number of tracks, and loading up anywhere from five to 10 more of Session Strings Pro 2 inside of Logic Pro resulted in errors that I was not able to achieve continuous playback of the tracks. The next test was using the Session Horns Pro library, and I was able to load up 30 tracks of the Session Horns Pro library inside of Pro Tools. And, you know, it's a probably a similar size or at least a similar demand on the CPU. And so that's, I guess, to be expected. Now, getting into Logic, once again, I was able to load 30 tracks, the exact same number of tracks inside of Logic Pro for the Session Horns Pro library. Now here's where the testing gets very interesting. So the next library that I use is the Scarby Rickenbacker Bass. So Rickenbacker, 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 I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but Rickenbacker Bass is what I'm gonna say. It's basically Paul McCartney's bass from the Beatles, right? And I loaded it up with the stock setting because I wanted to choose, so for the previous tests I was using chords and examples of chords playing because that's what I think a lot of people are going to be using strings and horns for for more chord parts. It could be more single note parts as well, but that's what I was using them for. I wanted to test something very simple, sort of a minimal library with single note parts. I was able to load up 85 tracks inside of Pro Tools of the Rickenbacker Bass Library. Now this is where it gets very interesting. Inside of Logic Pro, I was able to load up 185 tracks of the Rickenbacker Bass Library. That's correct, 185 tracks of the Rickenbacker Bass Library. 
Next up, we get to the Noir Library, and this is the piano library. It sounds very beautiful. And I was able to load up 70 tracks inside of Pro Tools of the Noir Library playing chords. Now, inside of Logic Pro, I was able to load up 140 instances of Noir playing back continuously without any problems whatsoever. And again, we're just sort of doubling the number of tracks that we can use inside of that DAW, and it's really, really interesting to see that result. Lastly, we have the Grandier Library, and that is a more simple piano library, one of the original stock piano libraries that come in a complete library, and I was able to load up 75 instances of the Grandier Library inside of Pro Tools and run those continuously. Inside of Logic, this is, this is insane. I was able to load up 215 tracks of the Grandier Library playing back continuously without any errors whatsoever. And that is just shattering. It shatters all the other records. So um, it's, it's insane that that is the result for some of these libraries and not the really CPU intensive or memory intensive libraries or large libraries, but for some of the smaller and simpler libraries inside of Contact. Logic Pro really outperforms Pro Tools, and I'm not sure why. It could be the ARM processing and the fact that it's running on the ARM processing on the M1 processors natively. It could be that Logic just outperforms Pro Tools in that sort of area. You guys let me know in the comments what you guys think. That's all I can say for this video. Down in the comments below, let me know some other libraries inside of Contact that you would like to see some benchmark tests for. And if you're curious about how the previous version of Contact has worked up to this point on the Apple M1 Mac Mini, click on the screen and I'll see you in the next video.